Welcome back, everybody, to the Strata Conference here in Santa Clara, California. I'm Jeff Kelly with Wikibon. Uh, we're live inside the Cube, SiliconAngle.tv's premier broadcast. Uh, we're winding down for the third day of coverage, uh, but we've saved the best for last. Our good friend, Cube alum, Lauren Swartz from Toku Tech. Welcome back to the Cube. <laughs> oh, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, we were talking a little bit beforehand, uh, before we came on the air, one of the big topics here, of course, is Hadoop. Everyone wants to talk about the distribution news um, with Intel and Greenplum and some of the reaction from guys like Hortonworks. But there are other uh, technologies out there besides uh, Hadoop, even though Hadoop seems to get a lot of the, the press for, for one reason or another. So, what you guys do is very interesting, really take take MySQL, a very popular database, and really just supercharge it, allow it to scale, uh, increase performance, uh, MariaDB as well. That's right. Uh, yeah. Right, so, so we've had you on theCUBE before, so I think we, we kind of, you know, we, we understand what you guys are doing, but I, we, I understand you're also kind of looking to, to move into new areas, new databases. You mentioned Mongo, which of course is a very popular database. Why don't we talk about that a little bit? Yeah, yeah, sure. So, um, you know, our basic technology is how do you improve indexing for, uh, for databases? You know, databases have used B-trees for, um, you know, 40 plus years. And it's been a very effective technology with you know very sequential information, but as the data has become much more um, random and varied, you know how do you deal with that? So our fractal tree indexing is part of our TokuDB offering, which as you mentioned is used in MySQL. It's been used by a variety of different customers now, and it really helps with the uh, performance as the database gets larger, particularly as you go bigger than memory and you want to keep up good insertion performance, you want to keep up lots of indexes, you want to have good compression and good schema flexibility. So we've shown the interest in that market, helped a lot of you know public and private companies mm -hmm. go in that route, um, and then what we saw is, in, in the vision of the company is, how do we take this indexing technology and really help other databases? Anytime you can index something, you can get better performance if you're going to come back to the data again and get that query, uh, you know, ideal performance out of it. So we've looked around and our customers were telling us that, you know, if you look at kind of, you know, the ubiquitous of MySQL, you know, what has changed over the years, you find that MongoDB is a very, very popular alternative database. People like it, it's very lightweight, easy to start going with, um, easy to go up for application, easy to kind of scale out and, and, and build out that way, and it's very developer friendly and kind of the right. language and the way it's written, and you don't have to worry about and, and, and think about schema as much. Um, but at the end of the day, if you want to add indexing to, uh, to MongoDB, you know, how can you get better performance? And uh, they face some of the same limitations as MySQL. As you um, look at something that grows outside of uh, memory, what happens to performance? Um, so we went in there and we started to do this uh, initial testing. We're kind of in our beta phase and getting some good feedback from, from users out there of how do we go in there and you know, replace the B tree with a fractal tree and what happens. Mm -hmm. And what we saw was uh, you know, very similar characteristics to the changes we made when we went to MySQL. We were able to get much uh, better insertion performance on a large database, something that could be 10x or more. Um, you know, it could be an order of magnitude or more, or maybe even two orders of magnitude, depending on the workload for um, you know, query latency. Um, and then we also saw compression is something that we're able to do. MongoDB by itself doesn't offer compression, but because we write much larger blocks out to disk, you can actually get much greater compression mm -hmm. when you put a fractal tree in there. So we've seen that, we've gotten a lot of enthusiasm from the community from, from going in there. Um, you know, our VP of engineering you know, spoke at uh, one of the Mongo events in Boston in the fall and kind of kicked off the interest and whatnot. And, um, we're getting a lot of user feedback now, hoping to uh, you know put that in the market in uh, the summertime. So, so what are some common scenarios you're finding? Uh, you know, what are the first kind of roadblocks they start to hit when they start to look to maybe a solution like yours? What are uh, are there common um, er times in the life cycle, I guess, of the use of something like Mongo, where you, you typically see where they're starting to hit limits? Yeah. Um, can you kind of share, shed some light sure, on that? Sure. Sure. It's it's usually the case, and um, you know, and we're still kind of learning about the environment, but it's the case where people kind of start a project or a small project, very lightweight, easy to use, and they get going down that path. And then you know the project's successful, right? And then mm -hmm. they start adding more and more to the database. And next thing you know, you're you're going out of the main memory when you know depends what it could be. It could be 30 gigs, 60 gigs, whatever the number is. And you're all of a sudden writing out to a disk, whether that's a rotating disk, it could be a flash disk or something like that. And that's where people start to see the performance bottleneck, you know, show mm -hmm. up. It could be um, you know anything from um, you know the query latency starts to be a problem. It could be something around the um, you know how many inserts or how fresh can I keep the data it could be a real issue. So that's where people start running running into bottlenecks and, mm -hmm. and start looking for alternatives. Uh, they might look for alternatives like, um, you know, if they're not using Flash, do I go there? Um, they might look for, um, if it was a MySQL, they might look for a different database, but people start wondering, what do I need to do now? Do I know, need to go off of Mongo to maybe Couchbase or something mm -hmm. like that? Um, and we're hoping to provide a good solution just like we do with MySQL is 
as you're successful, as it grows, um, you know, keep the database and, and really get extra performance out mm -hmm. of it. So could you apply this potentially to other, other databases? Is that kind of the, that, the business model, the business plan? That is the grand vision, <laughs> is you know, knocking it down one domino at a mm -hmm. time. Um, you know, MySQL is a great early place to start, very open architecture, you know, ubiquitous use, um, and they have a very flexible storage engine that you can just go in there and add things and, and, and be an alternative. So we've gone in there and done that. Um, so good place to start, got customer validation, you know, built that out. And, um, and then the next kind of domino, you know, very widely used is Mongo. But you can imagine, and, and we imagine this being used in lots of databases, whether it's relational, non-relational, wherever there's an index, we'd like to see it be a fractal tree index. Mm -hmm. well, interesting, because, um, you know, again, as we talked about, well, while at this conference, Hadoop seems to be the, the front and center, yeah. um, you know, you see, you've come across instances where you really illustrate the fact that, um, you know, we talk about, you know, Hadoop isn't, doesn't equal big data, it's part of the equation, but there are certainly instances where it's not um, the, the best choice. Uh, we were talking about an example in, uh, I believe it was life sciences and sure. uh, healthcare, so can you share that if you would with the audience, I think that was pretty um, illustrative. Yeah, yeah, we've been, uh, we've been learning about this and it's very, very interesting. We've gotten a lot of um, uh, requests over the past uh, couple of months for the genomic space, for mm -hmm. doing you know, bioinformatics, gene sequencing, we work with places like University of Montreal on, on their gene sequencing, and we've gotten interest from a number of others. And so I've been going to more and more events to kind of learn about you know, what's, what's important here, what, what matters, and, um, you know, and I heard other people asking the question, well, how come you don't just use Hadoop for this? Um, and apparently, when you look at, at least that particular field, a lot of the computations that they do in the sequencing tend to be you know, uh, done more in series rather than parallel, right? So it's not, by nature, a very parallelizable task. Um, and, the, and the opposite, and, and when you look at how their use case developed, a lot of them start with something simple like MySQL. Somebody starts with a little desktop thing, and the next thing you know, they want to do lots and lots of people in the population, and it grows big really quickly. So it, it doesn't fit that framework, um, but they still need extra performance as they go from their desktop to a large population. Um, and that's where you know really good indexing uh, can really make a difference. Mm -hmm. uh, so of course we're here at Strata. So sure. you've you've been here a frequent attendee. Yep. So I, yep. I'm curious. So what is your take on the kind of the the focus of the conference and the I guess the demographics we're seeing? Mm -hmm. uh, you know I think if you were here three years ago, from my perspective, anyway, it was a lot more. It was a lot of a lot geekier conference. There was sure, a, sure. It was uh, you know a lot of really you know hardcore uh, data geeks. And now we're starting to see, in my opinion, a little bit more of a, you know we're seeing some of the bigger vendors here. It's a little bit more of a right, um, right. a corporate. It's a little bit shift to a little bit more of a corporate focus, mm -hmm. uh, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, you know, certainly applying big data to business problems is is, is important. Right. Um, but from your perspective, what are you seeing? You know, when you know people coming by your booth, have you seen kind of a, a, a progression of the type of uh, attendees? Sure, sure. I think uh, I think you're right. It has shifted a little bit. Um, you know, we used to see uh, you know more of the DBAs coming mm -hmm. by and you know administrators kind of you know deep in the uh, in the uh, iron there trying to figure out what <laughs> what it meant for big data and how they were going to handle the plumbing there. But what's interesting here is I think there's more and more people on the application side, you mm -hmm. know, coming in this time. They really want to understand, you know, what are the latest tools, how am I going to utilize them, you know, where am I going to put it in, and you know, so tell me how am I actually going to make you know, money from this, or how am I going to derive value out of my data. And it's interesting, because then you hear more of the real life use cases, right? And then you can see, where do you fit in as a vendor? You know, where does your solution uh, come in? What could you do differently? So, um, in some sense, you know, it might be a little skeeky, but on the other hand, to actually as a vendor to learn what's going on and to see how people are using mm -hmm. it, um, that's that's pretty valuable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, share with some of those use cases you've been hearing about, both you know, and your customers. I mean, you're dealing with, especially as you move into um, Mongo, for instance, very popular. Uh, database, as you mentioned, building kind of web-scale apps. So right. what are some of the things you're seeing out there, maybe some of the, some of the anecdotes you've heard of the show, what are some of the uh, interesting use cases to really kind of yeah, start yeah. to get people thinking about the ways to really use and monetize the data? Yeah, yeah, so I think, um, you know, we see it a lot in, uh, you know, kind of traditional things, um, you know, that, that you hear a lot about where um, people are trying to do analytics on, um, on like um, online advertising and try to figure that out, so that tends to be a popular area. Um, I hear a lot of people um, talking about, you know, social graphs and social search and how to do that, so I hear a lot of uh, interest in that area. Um, and then, you know, there's just um, machine data, right? And, and, and how do you process that? Um, you, know, we, um, you know, we work with places like, um, like NASA on some of these projects where they have a lot of machine data coming in from satellites. And you know, and how do you keep that fresh and, 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 and really be able to query on it pretty, pretty quickly? 
And I think that's the, uh, at least from our perspective, that's some of the interesting things that we work on and, and we hear use cases for is, you know, I have a lot of data I, I, I want to deal with, but I also have a lot of data coming in at that kind of high velocity, right? Mm -hmm. So how do I be able to maintain that at the same time, be able to, you know, quickly turn around and turn that into something actionable, whether it's something, you know, on a website or web, web application, or it's something, you know, for the government, for an application mm -hmm. they're doing and trying to understand, you know, this event happened on a satellite, what does that mean and uh, how do I interpret it, so. Right, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's very interesting. I mean, from my perspective, one of the really last miles of, of this big data uh, trend really is, is bringing, is the applications, and really kind of bridging the gap from, you know, okay, you've got the data, we're learning to process it better, store it more effectively, um, and then, you know, data scientists and, those, and the tools they use are starting to improve, and we're starting to see some really interesting insights from the data, mm -hmm. but then you've got to take that and kind of put it into production and put it into applications that actually, you know, can repeatedly apply those insights for, for business value. So are you seeing, do you feel like we're making progress on that, and where are we in that kind of life cycle of, you know, kind of seeing the, the, the real promise of big data getting to the promised land, if you will, at the end, right, and right. Then at the, you know, the, the end of the journey where we've really got uh, applications in production that are really uh, impacting business on a large scale across uh, you know, various industries. Sure, sure. I think uh, I think we're kind of at the at the beginning of it, at least from what we see kind of mm -hmm. in our customers. They're really seeing you know what the value is when I have a large amount of data and I can do analysis on it real time and turn around a report or tailor kind of what I'm doing. Um, you know, we work with um, places. You know, kind of on the, the like you take the online advertising, right? Where mm -hmm. they look at people coming in um, and they try to decide. You know, you've got you just bought a black pair of shoes, a black pair of pants. You're going to buy a uh, a black sweater next. Is that the next move? That's a combination of what did you just do on the site, just mm -hmm. happened right now, uh, combined with, you know, what do they know about you from before and what other data they have on other people. So you've got to be able to maneuver all that mm -hmm. data and move around uh, very quickly and, and, and keep up with that volume. And I think people are coming up with some, you know, we have customers coming up with really creative and new ways to, um, to deal with that, you know, like, for example, if you're a large, um, you know, online, app, you know, shopping site, maybe there are times when um, you uh, realize that this person's not going to buy something, so you can advertise something else to them from a competitor mm -hmm. and sell the space, right? You've got to make those decisions in real time, mm -hmm. and it's something that, um, you know, I don't think was possible a few years ago, and now these tools are enabling just different ways of thinking about how to, you know, maximize every you know, value out of the business. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and kind of a related question, uh, I was speaking with uh, Pauline Nist from Intel earl earlier today, we were talking about, and she was making the point that really there's not enough, there's really, she doesn't think there's enough business people here kind of trying to understand mm -hmm. what you can do with data. Um, and she even says, maybe we need a, a new conference to focus more <laughs> on the business people. Yes. I mean, what is your take on, on the understanding of uh, kind of the business at large about some of the power of, of these new tools and technologies and um, approaches that are, are being developed. And you know, sometimes we get caught in our, our little right, bubble right. in the in the big data world and, sure. and in IT. Um, and then you know we, you know we're on the, we're on the coasts. We're in Silicon Valley or Boston or New York. And you know there are, there's a lot of space in between and a lot of industries that are not quite on the cutting edge necessarily mm -hmm. of IT. So what is your sense of uh, the understanding out there from the business side and and not necessarily you know the big you know, obviously a lot of the big banks understand some of this stuff and the online sure. retailers and the use cases we were talking about, but what about right. some more, you know, traditional, even small and mid-sized businesses for who, you know, for whom maybe the only time they really hear about big data is, you know, maybe once in a while on a, you will see a, a story will cross the wire or something, but it really it's not yeah, part yeah. of their day to day yet. I mean, do you feel like there's a long way to go in terms of educating I, the business? I, I, think, I think that is true. I mean, a lot of our very, you know, kind of interesting users and interesting uh, uh, cases are people who are very IT savvy, right? They might be, you know, a small startup who, um, you know, the guy is the IT guy, he's the founder, <laughs> and he really knows though, how to monetize this and, and where the values are and, and things like that. So, um, so yeah, so those are the people I think taking advantage of it. There's a lot to be done on the education of the business side. I think there's a lot of people on the IT side who see, um, you know, IT is kind of a cost center, right? And how do I reduce costs on that? And we still try to play into that messaging. I mean, we reduce like, you know, storage footprint with more compression. People understand, okay, my storage footprint is smaller, I save money. Um, but that's not as interesting as a, you know, as a business sale in a lot of cases is, you know, how do I do something and what does this enable me to, to kind of do? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I think what works for, for us and, um, and, you know, at least in our small community is um, understanding, you know, and sharing the stories of what people have done and, and, mm -hmm. and seeing the, the, the value of that. So when I go to go to these conferences and, um, you know, I've been busy meeting with customers in our booth and whatnot, but I most enjoy the sessions where people, you know, give those use cases, right? Mm -hmm. of, Here's what I used, here's the value I applied, you know, here's what was, was useful there. 
Um, and so more tracks like that, I think, you know, help spread the word of like, mm -hmm. I used it for this, I saw the value, it's a real use case, I use this tool and that tool and I put them <laughs> together. And, and that kind of makes it real, right? So mm -hmm. um, it might not be a separate conference, but you know, more tracks kind of focused on, you mm -hmm. know, you know here are the, here's some real life use cases and stories. So. Which, right, which you know, is exactly what we try to do uh, you know, on our peer insights, which we were talking about earlier. We're going to have Toko Tech join us for one of those. So definitely sure. tune in for that uh, in about a month. Uh, but thanks so much for coming on. Last question, so tell us you know, what, what can we expect from you guys in the next six, 12 months? What's kind of on your roadmap? Obviously, yeah. MongoDB development, but what else, uh, what else is kind of uh, on yeah, your roadmap? Yeah, yeah, so that's, um, you know, that's a, a big open or a big uh, effort for us is mm -hmm. you know, how do we, we go there? How do we bring that to the market? So I think we'll be very, very focused on that. Um, and then, you know, depending on the reception, it's, um, you know, the question becomes, you know, wh you know where do we go next? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we've tried little integrations, we've tried other things with like Cassandra, we've tried it with other, you know, major databases that are out there, um, you know, the, the bigger vendors, the more traditional relational ones. So I think we're trying to, you know, as we go in our stepping stones, is mm -hmm. kind of figure out, you know, which one can we knock down next, where it has the most interest, and, um, We'll, we'll be keeping our eye open. We, we try to make the, uh, the fractal tree indexing available by a Berkeley DB interface mm -hmm. as well, so uh, people can go in there and try and find new use cases, and I'm hoping that with people playing with it now, they'll come back and tell us, um, you know, we want to embed it here, we want to <laughs> do something here. Uh, I had a conversation here with a, a place doing social graphing, and they said, hey, we'd love to try your index there, so you know, maybe that's the next step, who knows? That's fantastic, yeah. it's exciting times. Well, Lawrence, thanks so much for coming on. Lawrence Schwartz from Toku Tech, Vice President of Marketing. Thanks for joining us again on theCUBE, appreciate it. Uh, and we'll be right back, uh, Dave and John, and we'll wrap it up. All right, thanks for having me. And we will not be being joined by Dave and John, unfortunately. And this is live TV, so sometimes we have these moments. So this is a wrap from the Strata Conference here in Santa Clara. We've had three days of live programming. Uh, as you can tell, we're all pretty tired after the long three days, but it's been exciting, a lot of good content. I hope you've enjoyed the coverage. And of course, we'll see you at our next live broadcast.